Thank you so much for coming. I, I'm so excited that you all came and, and some of you are new to me. It's very <laughs> exciting. You don't know the nightmares I've had, like sitting at home thinking that no one's going to show up to this thing. So thank you so much for coming to help me celebrate the publication of my book. It's very exciting and I'm so happy that you're all here. So um, as I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little talk and then I'm going to read a short excerpt from the book, and then I think we'll have some time and we'll do a little bit of a Q&A if you have any questions. You can ask me anything you want, although I may not answer. <laughs> I just want to say a few things about Ash. Um, this book took me eight years to write. <laughs> from first concept to this, this thing right here. Eight years, man. Uh, this is Partly because I was working full time while I was writing, you know, but it was also because I also had to rediscover my love for writing. I had, I've always wanted to be a writer. I think ever since I learned how to hold a pencil, I basically wanted to write fiction. But even though I wrote a lot as a kid, I wrote three fantasy novels when I was in high school because I was that much of a geek. <laughs> uh, fantasy, like epic fantasy with wars and stuff. I mean, I was in total geek. So, anyway, I still, however, did not believe that I could be a professional writer. So, I, basically, I really didn't want to fail at something that I wanted to do so badly. So, instead, I decided to become an investment banker. <laughs> you know, I, I, this makes sense, right? I, I actually. My first hint that this might not be the career for me was when I had my interviews my senior year in college, and one of the bankers who interviewed me called me and said, I'm sorry you didn't get the job, but I wish you the best of luck in your career as a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take that as a hint. But, you know, no. I got a job uh, working at Random House, which is the world's largest commercial book publisher. I was an editorial assistant there. And uh, that job basically convinced me that I didn't want to be an editor. <laughs> I still wanted to be a writer. So I decided to go to graduate school to get my master's in East Asian Studies from Harvard. <laughs> I had this plan, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a professor, I'll get tenure, I'll have job security, and then I can write fiction on the side, like in the summer. <laughs> yeah. So, Four years go by, I'm still in grad school, I realize I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I hate academia. Like the idea of becoming a professor made me want to vomit. <laughs> so, by this time, I had moved out to California um, to start a PhD program at Stanford. And then in September 2001, 9-11 happened. Uh, when it happened, I was in my first I was in a, a new apartment in Palo Alto. I had no furniture. I heard it on my clock radio. I thought it, I mean, I didn't think it was real. Right. So it made a huge impression on me because I had lived in New York for a little over two years. My second year there, I lived in Battery Park City, which is in the southernmost tip of Manhattan. And uh, I used to walk through the World Trade Center every day to take the subway to go to work at Random House. So um, I, watched a lot of television coverage, as everyone did after 9-11, and in one of, in some of the footage, they showed the Nine West store in the World Trade Center mall, you know, in the basement there, and um, it really was disturbing to me because it was entirely covered in ashes. And seeing that photo, the, those images, they just really made a huge impression on me. And it might sound cheesy, but I, it made me realize that I really did not enjoy my life at that time. I hated grad school. I had been stifling my desire to write for way too long. So I decided in September 2001 that I would write Ash. I chose to retell the story of Cinderella because it had always been my favorite fairy tale as a little girl. I even loved the Disney version. Like my dad used to wake me up in the morning with the, with the record playing. You know, the record, vinyl. So, I um, also, my favorite author, Robin McKinley, did a lot of fairy tale retellings, but she never retold Cinderella. So, I wanted to write the book that I wanted to read. 
I didn't realize, though, it was going to turn out to be a lesbian Cinderella. <laughs> the first draft was actually heterosexual. Uh, but then I gave that draft to one of my friends to read. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, she pointed out to me that the Prince Charming character was, didn't really have much chemistry with Ash, the Cinderella character. But there was this other woman in the book, <laughs> Kaisa, the king's huntress, and she had a lot of chemistry with Ash. So I, I was a little shocked when she pointed this out. I mean, I was like, really? Did I, I somehow written like the beginnings of this lesbian romance <laughs> in my Cinderella retelling? So at first I didn't know what to do. I, I mean, I was like, should I write a lesbian Cinderella? You know, I, was this going to completely doom my book from ever being published? <laughs> Seemed a little risky. Um, maybe I could just make the prince more charming somehow. <laughs> I tried. I made him like neater. I gave him a scar. Like, it didn't really. It didn't really work. So, you know, I, ultimately I decided to go for it. I figured this was the story I subconsciously wanted to tell, so I should do it. I rewrote the book at least twice before submitting it to agents. That's when Sarah read it. I, I wrote it another three times, at least, under the direction of my editor. And um, I decided that in Ash's world there would be no homophobia. Basically, I didn't want her story to be a coming out story. Not a coming out tale. I wanted it to be a fairy tale. So, the reactions that I've gotten to the book have, um, most of them have been really positive, but I think that most people seem to like the fact that uh, same-sex couples are entirely normal in Ash's world. But some of the responses I've gotten have kind of surprised me. Some people have commented online that they don't think it's realistic for gay people to be so accepted so easily, or that you can't be gay or a minority, for that matter, without being persecuted. Um, so you know what? I entirely reject that. <laughs> I think that the real fairy tale is not the fact that Cinderella could be gay. It's that nobody cares that she's gay. The fairy tale is that she can fall in love with another woman, and it's as normal and as wonderful as any heterosexual romance. So, to me, that's what Ash is about. I think we need to imagine worlds that are free of homophobia. If only so that we can continue to work in this world and not be discouraged, you know, as we continue to fight for that imagined world free of homophobia. So that's, that's what Ash is about for me.